Cries of the main character, Main Don, echoed as he lay on the ground hurt and tired sighing heavily, with sweat dripping from his brow. He didn't fully understand what had happened. The protagonist looked up in shock, opening his mouth wide, trying to breathe more air. He bared his teeth, both fiercely and with a sense of despair, as he looked at his own body, which was stuck on iron spikes sticking out of the ground and completely covered in blood. The realization struck him. At that moment, he was truly trapped in a dungeon. His friends gathered around the pit, desperately trying to call out to him. Meanwhile, the rabbit laughed cruelly, pointing out that Trap 7 still had an amazingly effective impact. They were confused, however, because they had not expected there to be a trap at the bottom of the dungeon. The guys felt a wave of anger, because such dangers should have been reported ahead of time. The archer held his weapon tightly, glancing at his bitter friend, who was looking into the hole where his companion lay. The archer shouted to his friend, named Sue, insisting that they were running out of time, because the enemies were already advancing. As Su Wu approached them, he was filled with anger for he realized he could not assist his friend. Anxiously, he turned towards the pit, preparing to leave. However, he apologized to Don with a shake of his head, on the verge of departure. The main character was lost in thought, contemplating whether people truly die in such a manner covered in blood. Meanwhile, Don grasped the iron bars and attempted to rise, enduring excruciating pain. He clutched the iron rod tightly, his hands smeared with blood, sobbing heavily. Completely drenched in his own blood, he managed to climb out of the trap, leaning his hand against the ground, filled with indignation at his dire circumstance. His hand trembled violently as he pressed it against the earth, bleeding profusely. He sensed that his faculties were dulled, realizing he had lost far too much blood. This awakening led him to perceive the entire situation as surreal. He could scarcely believe it. The devastated protagonist, with a tormented expression, contorted his face in agony. Deep inside, he felt a strong disconnection from reality. He recognized that everything had changed from the very start, right from the moment he was called into this terrible world. However, he tried to make sense of it all. This was difficult, because nothing felt familiar anymore. Although he wanted to adapt, the feeling of being lost lingered. At that moment, this harsh reality started to sink in. Fast forward to a month ago, the protagonist was walking down a busy sidewalk, chatting on the phone with his hands shoved into his pockets. This was before he was suddenly pulled into a world he had never known, called the Dungeons. Suddenly, he widened his eyes and pulled the phone away from his ear as a blue aura appeared beside him. A portal, glowing with blue light, appeared right beneath him, threatening to swallow him whole. He looked around frantically as his figure began to fade, and he couldn't understand what was happening. His teeth gritted in fear because he was completely taken in by the teleportation process. The blue hologram and pixelated portal showed that a teleportation event was happening. The blue expanse of the portal finally dropped him in a thick forest, surrounded by tall trees. After landing, he felt overwhelmed. He lifted his head and saw a crowd of people who were closely watching him. Among them was a young man with glasses, holding a phone, who looked at the newcomer with a cautious expression they realized. The presence of another person had shown up in this place and they were trying to understand what was happening around them. At that moment, Su Wu's friend, whose identity was still a mystery to the main character, looked at the young man closely. They were thinking about whether the people around them were really under hypnosis. Don, breathing heavily and sweating, watched the crowd from under his furrowed brow, feeling a bit scared a tinge of trepidation. He couldn't figure out what was going on or why so many people were gathered there. The main character stood up and carefully looked at the restless group, noticing that many were holding their heads in pain. The man in the suit felt very unsettled by what was happening, realizing that he had come for an interview, but instead found himself in a totally confusing situation. Meanwhile, another young man in a white t-shirt was trying to check his phone, hoping to find out where he was using the Maps app. Then, a notification popped up, congratulating them on being welcomed into the dungeon. In a flash, the main character spun around, shocked, his face twisted in worry, as a white rabbit in a suit appeared in front of them, giving off a confusing vibe. The bright glow of the guide surrounded everyone as he introduced himself, saying he was the navigator for this strange game. 
Everyone there had gotten an invitation to join in on this experience. The rabbit, a fascinating figure, put his hand on his cheek and asked the attendees if they were curious about what the game was going to be like. He decided to answer this question himself, saying that curiosity was strong among the group and he planned to explain all parts of the event. The main character, along with the others, leaned in with a mix of confusion and sweat, trying to figure out who this toy rabbit was in front of them. However, the man in the suit became more and more agitated, striding toward the guide with a sense of urgency. He demanded clarification, showing his frustration at not understanding the essence of the show, or if it was really a game. Although he seemed uninterested, he stressed his lateness for an important interview. The rabbit's expression changed slightly, a hint of surprise crossing his features. The man insisted that the guide stop his antics and quit hiding behind a simple toy, expressing a wish to confront the organizer of this whole spectacle directly. In response, the guide extended his hand forward, signaling a willingness to engage. With a slightly ironic smile showing that no trickery was involved, he explained the importance of his upcoming statement. He mentioned that there were no other people around, except for them. The guide opened his arms, one of which held a red umbrella. He tried to get the group's attention and was about to explain the game's rules. However, the men looked at him with anger. The man in the suit grabbed the rabbit by its jacket and forcefully told it to be quiet. He accused the rabbit of saying silly things and insisted that it call a taxi or find some other way to get away. Meanwhile, the guide had a wicked smile on his face and started to say that, first of all, he would explain the game's rules. He showed that same creepy grin again. The main character stared at the rabbit with a mix of sweat and shock as it pointed out that this would be a game one learns to navigate through death. Don decided to go up to the man who kept holding the animated rabbit. The guide announced that the game would happen in a dungeon. The man in the suit continued to scowl at the rabbit lifting it high over his head. The rabbit explained that, for the sake of the impatient man, he would first need to state the most important rules of the game, because no one was there except himself and those people. Don, thinking about the situation, honestly believed he was having a vivid dream. The rabbit mentioned that the main rule is that one must always act a little deferentially toward the guide in the game. The rabbit waved his hand sharply and seemed ready to deliver a devastating blow to the man. The guide, with a fierce look, struck the man hard, making blood spray from his head. He stressed that it was wise to be polite if they wanted to keep their lives. However, Don soon realized this was not a dream. Splashes of blood were everywhere, landing on the main character's face, who widened his eyes in disbelief at what was happening. As the man's bloody body crumpled to the ground, the whole crowd became sharply aware of what was going on, filled with fear. The guide then wanted to know if everyone had seen him kill a man, adding that he would get rid of anyone who didn't follow the rules. People were instantly overcome with fear. The group looked totally shocked, clutching their heads in disbelief when they realized a person had just died right in front of them. The man, bloody and grotesque, lay lifeless in a suit, his eyes eerily open, surrounded by a pool of his own blood. The guide explained that this was a game where one must learn to deal with the experience of death. However, it was still a harsh reality they had to face. The protagonist, overwhelmed by the scene, slumped and started to shake on the ground. Don, resting his hands on the earth, gave a sorrowful look at the corpse. Meanwhile, while the others hurried away without noticing much around them, the blood-stained rabbit took off his hat, raising an index finger to say that the area ahead was dangerous. Because he was acting as a guide, he planned to give them some basic equipment. The protagonist, still sitting on the ground in shock, saw a small knife appear in front of him. Other people gasped in surprise as different weapons started to show up in their hands. An older man, also wearing a suit, said that it was. Virtual reality has become super popular, leading many to think that everyone was living in a 3D world. While the rabbit hopped across the ground, he overheard people talking about what was happening. One person said he had read an article about how virtual reality could create false memories, which were then shown as real experiences. The rabbit jumped high into the air, looking over the crowd below. He told them they could think of anything they wanted, stressing the importance of playing the game. People were amazed to see a flying rabbit. However, when the guide looked down, 
a terrifying creature appeared in front of the players. Every minute, new monsters crawled out from the dark and those with tentacles grabbed people. He remembered times when many bodies had fallen into deadly traps. These tentacled monsters kept attacking the survivors. Time went on and more people died. If he didn't stay careful, he would also be killed. He made a mistake and, because of that, he died. Although there were times when survival meant getting rid of others, he understood the harsh reality of the situation. This was not easy to accept. However, he knew it was necessary. The choices people make can be difficult, but sometimes they have no other option because of the circumstances they face. In a game all about survival, one person confronted the main character, kicking him in an attempt to grab resources. The protagonist, who stood in front of a blue screen, seemed totally confused by the sight of a man with glasses, who was hungrily eating a piece of meat. Dawn, alarmed, turned to the attacker and insisted that they had left this food for everyone. However, the man looked puzzled, saying that the protagonist was not very useful. Disheartened, the main character lowered his head while looking at the inventory screen. The man said that fighters like him risk their lives to protect people like Dawn who, although there, didn't even have basic fighting skills. He went on to say that if Dawn was told to get something, he had to give it up without any weird outbursts. At that moment, two bright skill cards appeared, showing new abilities another weapon given by the dungeon game players. The protagonist imagined a shadowy figure giving off a yellow aura, a sight he often saw in MMORPGs, which usually granted amazing powers or magical skills. This dynamic interaction of abilities could really change the path of their survival. However, it's not always easy to predict what will happen. Some might struggle, but others will thrive because they adapt well to new situations. Although challenges exist, this can lead to unexpected outcomes that shape their future. Individuals got the skills they needed to fight. However, the main character, after thinking deeply, sadly saw his situation while looking at his status window. This status window showed physical strength 67,100, feeling of satiety 34,100 and skills cleansing beginner 2 for getting rid of bad stuff in areas. His focus was mainly on the cleansing skill, which he understood was just a small ability that didn't help in combat. This skill only worked to remove harmful impurities from the meat of animals and monsters. The guy with glasses looked at him with a smug expression saying he should be grateful because, without their help, he would have died on the first day. He also claimed that Dawn was useless and just wasted resources. Arrogantly, he told him to be thankful for the chance to move around at all. Su Wu watched as the meat-carrying individual hit Dawn. The guy pointed out that if the main character had even a little conscience, he would give up his share to them. Su Wu asked what they were doing while the rude guy with glasses and Dawn turned to him. Soon Wu, who said they had reached an agreement to distribute the food the next day, shot a glare at the guy who wore an ironic grin while scratching the back of his head. He replied that today was a really tough battle, and thus he wanted to regain his strength a little. Soon Wu made it clear that there were no exceptions to this plan. Su Wu widened his eyes and menacingly told the guy to wait for tomorrow's distribution. Watching this, Su Wu and Don saw the guy get more and more angry as he looked like he was about to leave. In response, Soon Wu reached out to the main character and asked if he was okay. Don thanked his defender, happiness showing on his face. However, Soon Wu looked at his friend with a bit of concern, wanting to make sure he didn't think too much about the situation, because everyone had recently been pretty rude. That's why this incident happened. Su Wu then looked at the guy who chuckled lightly while scratching his head again, he replied that he hadn't thought about it much, saying everything was fine. Su Wu told Don to get some rest, because they would be performing early the next morning. He remembered the guide's words, which said that by tomorrow, they should arrive at their final destination. The protagonist raised his eyebrows, however, he was still concerned about the journey ahead. His eyebrows furrowed as he looked at his defender in awe. He realized that he, too, wanted to help in some way. However, he shot a sarcastic glance at the knife given to him. Without thinking, he grabbed it and started pretending to be a warrior. Thick clouds loomed above the mountains, hiding the treetops. The children's screams echoed while a massive sphere chased after the boys, who were trying hard to escape its path. The rabbit floated in the air, 
watching as the ball rolled dangerously behind a group of kids. He warned them that if they only paid attention to the danger behind, something bad would definitely happen. The rabbit looked down at the boys, repeating his warning about the many traps in this area. Su Wu, with some friends, moved ahead while nervously checking their surroundings. Su Wu smiled back at his friends, enjoying the view of them falling into the traps. The brunette took out his sword and kept running, yelling to his remaining friends to stay alert, dodge obstacles and keep going. The leader turned back, his temper flaring because he admonished the group for their delays. He reminded them that if they paused, they would face serious consequences. However, he also knew that sometimes a break could be helpful. But this was not the time for resting, although they might think otherwise. He expected them to keep moving forward and he didn't want to hear any more excuses. Don was extremely tired and started to breathe heavily after such a chaotic run. He felt his energy fading quickly and a layer of sweat covered his forehead. The shapes of his friends blurred in front of his eyes because of his fatigue. However, he knew he had to chase after them. Suddenly, he stepped onto the platform, only to discover that he had accidentally fallen into a trap. He looked down in shock, realizing that the ground was breaking apart beneath him. His eyes dropped immediately, and he took in the terrifying scene happening below. Wu glanced back and saw that their friend had fallen into the void. The brunette grew worried, trying hard to call out to his missing friend. The rabbit was hanging in the air, flailing his arms, when a group of guys came back to check the area. He said that Trap 7 had an incredible effect, explaining that there were more traps hidden in the ground. The guy with the axe noted that such dangers should have been warned about earlier. The rabbit looked at his friends with a fierce intensity trying to apologize to his comrade. Sue rushed forward, shouting to his friends to flee too, testing the limits of their resolve. The ground beneath them was shifting. At this moment, the rabbit laughed with a sense of malice and amusement. The guide, meanwhile, was soaring through the air, watching the people fleeing below. He ironically commented on the idea that he believed the group shared a close bond. However, he found Mr. Wu's composure surprisingly steady. The brunette, Tears streaming down his face and bitterness clouding his heart, continued to charge ahead, burdened by the pain of his lost friendship. He mentally offered an apology to Don, because this was all he could do at that moment. The main character found himself stuck in a pit filled with spikes, super tired and holding his stomach with his hand. At that moment, the guide praised the group, explaining that it had been a long time since more than ten people had made it through such a tough situation. A good reason for this success was said to be the smart choices made by the leader, Suwu. However, the injured Don seemed close to death, sweat dripping down his face, showing just how bad his condition was. At the same time, the rabbit warned the others to stay alert. The main character, very aware of the guide's presence, realized that he was still alive. Next to him was Don's bloody hand, close to a knife that had appeared during the chaos. The guide then announced that a strong enemy was waiting for them in this round and formally introduced the final boss. The main character breathed out deeply, feeling a strange sense of calm in the middle of all the suffering. He sat in the pit, near the iron spikes, his hands resting limply and his head soaked in his own blood. In this moment of reflection, he contemplated his comrades. He wrestled with the idea that perhaps this was the end for him. Distant screams echoed as his companions fought against the monster, their resolve unwavering. Observing in disbelief, the group saw Suwu deftly wielding his blade against the colossal MK monster. However, it was then that the final boss began to succumb to the onslaught. As the group watched their leader, a sense of wild excitement took over them. He had defeated the last enemy. They celebrated the idea of having beaten this ultimate foe. The rabbit, floating in midair, looked at the brunette, who was clearly admiring the fighter's skills. The guide, feeling embarrassed, clasped his hands together, his cheeks slightly red. He acknowledged, although a bit skeptically, the amazing things the group had done, because he never thought these seemingly weak people could actually defeat such a tough opponent. He specifically praised Su Wu, who had won the battle using just one hand, even though he was out of breath and tired. However, Su Wu, frustrated, shouted a question to the side, asking if they could go home now. The rabbit, surprised, watched the group in disbelief, 
folding his hands as he wondered why this sudden wish to leave had come up. The guide his gaze full of a hint of malice urged the group to combine their strength and muster their energy. They needed to push themselves toward the next challenge. An irate Su Wu, however, stood flanked by his confused companions. He glared at the rabbit, grappling with the strange nature of their current situation. He loudly expressed his frustrations about the information given by the guide during their last meeting, saying that finishing the mission meant the dungeon was over. However, he pointed out that this was exactly why they had made it through the first phase successfully, and now it was important to move on to another dungeon.